All right, hello everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for our uh, latest departmental deep dive. Um, tonight we will be um, highlighting our languages and cultures program um, and all of the specific um, you know degrees and tracks that are underneath um, and underneath it, this area. So this is an exciting, you know, an exciting event. These are popular majors for a lot of students, um, primarily because it's so valuable to have a diverse skill set and understand, you know, other languages and other cultures that are different from, you know, from from our 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 primary language and culture. And these are degrees that are ideal to be able to add to a, you know, your uh, your major or your minor. So they're very versatile in that. So I'm um, really excited for this. Before I go any further, though, um, if uh, you know, Mikola and Amarelis, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, that, that would be great so everyone can, can kind of get to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mikola? Thank you, Thomas. Uh, uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, my name is uh, Mikola Poliuha. Uh, I am currently working as a uh, of integrated chair for the Department of Languages and Cultures. And uh, I uh, uh, taught uh, German and Russian at Bloomsburg University for already uh, 10 years. And uh, currently I teach mostly Russian classes. Okay, and Mikola, just out of curiosity, so you are a faculty member in languages and cultures. How many languages can you speak? Are, are, are conversant in at least? It depends on the level of proficiency. So I am comfortable with a, a couple of languages. So I do speak, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, German, Russian. Uh, I am comfortable with Polish, uh, with Ukrainian. Uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I have some fluency in uh, uh, French. Uh, I can comprehend uh, Spanish. Uh, so those are generally some of the languages that uh, I speak. Excellent. And, and how long have you been teaching at Bloomsburg? So I have been teaching at Bloomsburg for 10 years. So it's actually my 10th year right now. Oh, that's exting. Oh, well, congratulations on the, the, the 10-year reunion. Good for you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mikola. Thank you. Uh, Amarillis. Well, I am uh, Amarillis Hidalgo de Jesus. Uh, I teach Spanish. And when it comes to cultures, I usually teach other culture classes in English too. Um, I am the person who currently has been helping Mikola to coordinate mm -hmm. the, the activities for the Spanish section in this new transition sure. that we have. Uh, I am the advisor of the Spanish club and I do a lot of activities uh, with the students. I wear a lot of hats here. Um, also, I'm the person who brings a lot of speakers from sure. abroad here too. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of languages, right now, I, I am at, at the kind of intermediate level okay. with the French and Portuguese. Now, I can understand them without problems mm -hmm. and, and I can read them, but when it comes to speaking fluency, I really need to, to work in that part. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Okay, what town? What town in Puerto Rico? I'm from Caguas, Caguas, Puerto Rico. Excellent. And how long have you been at Bloomsburg, Amarillis? 30 years. <laughs> 30, did you say 30? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Yes, oh, good for you. Years, yes. And um, I don't know. My so perspective, prospective students in the audience, you know, parents, supporters in the audience, it's a good sign. If someone stays at one place for 30 years in one department, that is a good sign. Uh, Amarillis did not say, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm moving on to greener pastures. She wants to be here. So that's a good sign. Well, I, I think that Brunswick has a lot of things to offer. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of things to offer to the students too. Sure. Uh, we are always finding activities for them to do. Yep. We used to have the study abroad program. We were very active. Like mm -hmm. I used to take them to Spain and, and Mikola to uh, Eastern Europe, no? Mm -hmm. And Daya to Morocco. Mm -hmm. And we sent them to also to uh, Germany, Puerto Rico, uh, Mexico, no? Right. France. But uh, I guess we, we are going to be able to resume that in a year or two years. <laughs> That's our hope, no? But uh, right in the languages and cultures department, the world gets a little smaller. 
mm -hmm. right? Because you're able to so ac access the, the, these cultures and learn more about it, travel there physically. Um, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about in the presentation is basically like how what, for the students who major or minor in a language in, in, or a culture at language and a culture at Bloomsburg, like what is the normal on ramp for them to say, oh, you know what, this is something I might want to study in college. Um, and those subjects that I just mentioned are among the things that normally lead students to the degree is, you know, what, I really like to travel. I'm really interested in this particular culture. I want to learn more about that. Um, or th there's a, a career advantage to me being familiar with this language in this culture. Um, so those are all things that we're going to get into tonight. Um, but I'm sorry, Amarillis, I, I cut you off there a little no, bit. No, no, sorry. What I was going to mention is that I, I also uh, di uh, coordinate the internship in Spanish. Okay. Right now it's at San Colombo, but I have I have also coordinated some internships in my previous year in businesses sure. around the area. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we, you know we find ways for the students, and also mm -hmm. we help them uh, with. Uh, Fulbright applications, no? Sure. Uh, and we got one. Our department got one. Mm -hmm. huh? Oh, and who is it? Um, was Alexander, it a faculty member or was it a student? It's a student. It's a student. Alexander, Alexander, oh, that's Miller, exciting. Alexandra Miller. Okay. Uh, I, I work with her, but I know that there was uh, another Russian student who applied sure. for it before, and we had another Spanish one too, but okay. she made it to, to the end, but the pandemic cut the program. <laughs> sure. Unfortunately, sure. Sure. Uh, that happens, no? But uh, we do this kind of thing. We are always trying to help the students uh, right. to get through or you know, look for opportunities, scholarships, grants. Mm -hmm. uh, we yes. work with the students. It's a family. I can add a little bit uh, about Amarilis because she is also responsible for our marketing efforts. Uh, yes, so she so she does a lot of uh, uh, external um, external things for our departments. Uh, so she is uh, very much involved uh, with uh, working co uh, collaborating with uh, our uh, alumni, sure. and uh, she is just uh, over. Uh, the period of 30 years that she has been at Bloomsburg University, she has uh, immense experiences in different areas of uh, university life. So she is excellent uh, advisor, she is an uh, excellent instructor, and uh, mm -hmm. she, she is always available. That's why students like her. I'm thinking a building named after Amaryllis would be in order. Right? <laughs> I mean, something that something big, you know, yes, big yes. and grand, you know. Um, oh, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Um, and, and for everyone watching in the audience, um, this event should take probably around 30 or 40 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them onto the Facebook post. I will happily relay them to Mikola and Amaryllis. Um, and this is being recorded and we'll be uh, reposting the recording uh, probably tomorrow or Saturday. Um, but without further ado here, I will go ahead and uh, I will turn this over to uh, Mikola and, and Amaryllis to start the presentation. Okay, excellent. So welcome to the Department of Languages and Cultures. And uh, uh, in today's presentation, we will talk uh, about the reasons why uh, to study foreign languages, then uh, uh, the structures of our program and uh, what our alumni do, where they find jobs uh, and uh, how successful they are. So uh, the first uh, thing that I would like to address is uh, the study in foreign languages, why they are needed currently. And uh, according to most recent surveys, um, uh, employers right now, they uh, require uh, uh, skills in uh, foreign languages. Our world uh, uh, is getting smaller and smaller, and there are a lot of interactions between uh, uh, different countries in the world. So that's why uh, uh, you can see statistics here in front of you. So that 56% uh, of employers uh, say that uh, uh, the demand uh, for foreign languages will increase uh, in the next uh, five years. Then uh, in most organizations, uh, employers rely heavily on uh, uh, employers who 
can speak foreign languages. Anytime that uh, 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 employers are looking for someone uh, to make a call abroad uh, or to, uh, to write an email abroad, so they are uh, searching within their organization for someone who can successfully do that. Um, so then 47% uh, 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 of employers, uh, they say that there is a need for language skills uh, exclusively for the domestic market. Uh, in, inside the United States, uh, there are quite a few people who speak uh, different foreign languages. And uh, uh, so for example, in the United States, especially in the South, we have sizable population of uh, Hispanics uh, who's uh, uh, primarily uh, language is Spanish. Uh, and that's why to successfully communicate with uh, that uh, uh, population, uh, uh, knowledge of Spanish uh, would be uh, extremely useful. Yeah, inside Pennsylvania, we have uh, also some ethnic groups, like we have uh, 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 people who speak German. And uh, to successfully bring messages to them, to market uh, to them certain products or certain services, uh, it's always useful to speak their language. Yeah, and, and Mikola, I think this is such a good point, too, because so we've done a lot of these departmental deep dives um, across every college at Bloomsburg, a number of different programs in this notion of, you know, the importance of not only knowing the language, but a different culture has been pretty consistent um, across the board. Now it's been more prominent in certain majors, international business, marketing, political science, psychology, communications. There's a lot of different um, degree programs in career fields where this is such a fundamental component of success. Um, and this is something I started the event off by saying is this is very common, a very common double major. So when you go to college, you can study more than one subject, right? You could be a marketing major and a, um, uh, a Spanish major, right? Yeah. Or be a marketing major and a German minor, right? There's a lot of different things that you can do with that. And it gives you a skill set that is, that will help you stand out. So it's not only for personal enrichment, right? Or to be a better citizen, although those things are important and that is among the benefits. There, there are career outcomes that are directly connected to being able to learn um, another language and culture. And this is something that, that a lot of students will learn if not prior to coming to college, freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, it's like, oh, you know what? I really, I should pick up a minor in this. This is gonna be important. I'm gonna need to know this. Um, and it becomes a nice um, credential to be able to have on your resume as well. Absolutely. And uh, you are absolutely right about this uh, because uh, we always encourage our students to take another major. So, and almost 100% of our students, uh, they are double majors. So we have uh, a lot of students who are coming from nursing department, from digital forensics, from communication, from political sciences, international business, and so on. And they find it useful. So every time uh, um, when they graduate and uh, we, we try to keep track uh, of them, where they are going, the, uh, especially Dr. Amarilis Hidalgo de Jesus. Uh, she mm -hmm. talks to a lot of them and they say that uh, speaking foreign language helped uh, uh, of, during the interview process because suddenly when uh, uh, a lot of people with a very similar degree apply for the same position, but uh, someone speaks a foreign language on top of other credentials that they have. So it creates a nice talking point during the interview, and uh, it definitely gives a lot of benefits uh, to, uh, to our students. And just kind of a, a, a personal anecdote. So both of my children are preschool age. Mm -hmm. They speak foreign languages as preschool students. So it is becoming more and more a minimum expectation that you are able that you are conversing in in a language other than your own you know native language so you're going to see younger populations of people that are multi multilingual i believe would be the word um so this is going to be something more commonplace so it's almost like this is part of the competition to get a job now is being able to speak multiple languages we live in, we live in a diverse country um so this is going to be important yes yeah. and also that it um is you cannot reach a high proficiency in the language, but you have uh, the culture background. Mm -hmm. Also, employers uh, they look at that. 
because yes. they need people who can be able to work with uh, people from different cultures because we are in the diversity era and yep. the U.S. is also doing a lot of work with uh, other countries and, and I can talk about this like, like my son <laughs> mm -hmm. who is in business in, in Florida. He always say that uh, he was very good that I pushed him to learn French <laughs> and Spanish. <laughs> And sometimes he said that he regret not being able to to learn other languages sure. because he needs this. Right. He managed with, with the Spanish and, and the Portuguese and, and the Italian because they're quite a bit similar. But uh, he used languages a lot. Right. And, and in social sciences, uh, right. people who were uh, doing social work. Mm -hmm. So languages are, are handy. And doesn't matter yeah. what language honestly because this gives them a kind of background cultural background to deal with uh, different populations right and yeah those are what is important yes completely agree yes mm -hmm. great points okay so now i think that uh, we can move on to uh, concentrations what we are offering actually in our department and uh, in our department we have uh, uh, multiple concentrations we call them tracks uh, so we have a general major, which is called uh, languages and cultures. And then uh, within uh, uh, that major, we offer tracks. Currently we have Arabic studies, Chinese, French, German, Russian and East European studies, Spanish uh, and Spanish for heritage uh, language learners. In addition uh, to those uh, languages that are listed here, we offer couple of languages that are not uh, leading to the degree, but nonetheless, we do have uh, on our books and uh, we offer them uh, on regular basis. And those languages are uh, Italian. So we have uh, uh, two levels of Italian and uh, Latin. We also have Latin. So it's a nice mixture of uh, uh, traditional languages uh, such as uh, French, uh, German, uh, Spanish, uh, uh, critical languages such as uh, Arabic, uh, uh, then uh, uh, Russian, uh, Chinese, uh, and classical languages such as Latin. And even so, like to me, one of the more interesting connections. Um, so you talk about Latin. Mm -hmm. We'll have students who are chemistry majors. Uh, pre-pharmacy majors, pre-med majors, study Latin in college, take classes or minor or something in Latin, because that becomes really important to understanding the titles of medicine in certain parts of the body, because it's all rooted in Latin. Yes. So like, when I tell you that this is embedded in the fabric of every degree, that is not, not hyperbole. That is a literal translation. It is in every major. Mm -hmm. And uh, also Latin is popular among uh, one more group of students, uh, those who are uh, planning to apply for law school, yes. because a lot of legal vocabulary is based on Latin. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Very interesting. So uh, just uh, very briefly about the coursework uh, that is required for our degree. Uh, uh, a BA in um, uh, languages and cultures consists of 33 credits. Uh, and uh, uh, students are required to take uh, uh, classes in uh, uh, target language. Uh, so that whether it's going to be Spanish, German, uh, French, Russian, and so on. They are uh, very often they require to take uh, culture classes or uh, classes related to uh, uh, things like uh, literature, film, uh, uh, or uh, uh, history. Mm -hmm. uh, they are required to take uh, also some umbrella classes. Currently, we are offering two umbrella classes. Those um, uh, uh, the classes in languages in and cultures. Uh, uh, one of them it's uh, at the level 200 uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, comparative cultural studies uh, and the other one it's uh, at the 400 level uh, that is required for all the students it is uh, comparative linguistic studies in uh, all our classes especially our language classes we are uh, looking for developing four uh, skills it's uh, speaking listening reading and writing 
uh, at the, the different languages develop their own criteria uh, at uh, what level of uh, proficiency we want to achieve uh, uh, within um, uh, those four skill uh, set. Uh, and uh, um, some languages are more demanding, others are a little bit easier because, for example, in order to successfully write in Chinese, uh, a person must learn a lot of different characters and uh, it is uh, uh, impossible to expect that students uh, will be uh, writing a lot of Chinese characters just after taking one class. Uh, in other languages where that are based on uh, Latin scripts, uh, such as French, uh, German, or Spanish, uh, reading comes much easier. Uh, then also listening skills, uh, uh, depending on the language, they are developed differently. But uh, in general, towards the end of uh, the program, our students are able to function uh, at uh, intermediate, high, or advanced low levels. Awesome. May I say something that we forget about in the previous one about that I will connect with this? Uh, the heritage speakers uh, track that we have, no? Uh, it is a popular track among students, Hispanic students, no? Who want to improve their language skills. But we have been finding also that beside that, they learn other languages. No? Uh, so it's very common, not only with the heritage speakers, it's very common here that our students uh, are minoring in Russian and then decided to take a class in German or Spanish or French, uh, Italian for some point, it happens a lot. No? Mm -hmm. So in certain ways, as soon as the students start uh, like, you know, seeing this as something important, they want to add something else. And sometimes they connect, for example, Arabic and Spanish, they, they made that connection of French and Spanish, no? Mm -hmm. And Russian and German. So sometimes they do those kind of things. And also they, a lot of them, when they graduate, they go abroad right. and, and teach English as a second language. And then there is where they acquire that, uh, native speaker fluency. Mm -hmm. and we have a lot of cases like that, a, a lot of students. And then that, uh, they went abroad, spent a year, two years, and then came back and they have a good job. Mm -hmm. And after all, this is part of your education to find a good job. No? Right. <laughs> you have to use your resources and yes. you have to try to, to find uh, your path and passion for whatever you are doing. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Yes, that's a great point. Yeah. Okay, so here is, uh, I briefly already mentioned about this. Uh, it, it's uh, what students learn uh, within the program and uh, it's uh, classes on language, obviously. Uh, culture classes, we have composition classes, history classes, we have a number of electives. Uh, and uh, uh, in addition, we have study abroad options. Uh, so uh, previously, and uh, Dr. Hidalgo de Jesus, uh, she mentioned about this uh, earlier, that uh, before the pandemic, we had very active uh, study abroad programs. Uh, uh, Dr. Hidalgo de Jesus, for years, uh, she had been taking students uh, at first to Puerto Rico many years ago, and then uh, more recently to Spain. Uh, students absolutely loved uh, her programs. Uh, uh, I conducted trips to uh, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, and uh, that trip was uh, uh, probably the biggest in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, mm -hmm. So it was faculty-led uh, study abroad trip. Uh, last time, uh, uh, almost 70 students traveled with us. Uh, uh, then uh, we have uh, Dr. Lau Yuni, who teaches Arabic. Uh, he uh, conducted trip uh, to Morocco. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great success. Students loved that. Uh, uh, we have also uh, active exchange uh, uh, agreements with uh, Germany, with France. Uh, uh, some of our students uh, uh, go abroad using uh, third uh, party programs. Uh, and um, in general, we are encouraging uh, 
almost 100% of our students to go abroad because we always tell our students that uh, it is important. So they, uh, they, when they go abroad, the uh, uh, language comes much easier to them because they live in the environment, uh, they experience uh, different cultures, uh, so they can almost touch everything that they are learning. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Chinese, that, we had like uh, Dr. Liu used to take them to China and he sent them to China for, mm -hmm. because we have an exchange program with some universities in China. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, do you anticipate resuming um, a more traditional study abroad program this upcoming year? Yes, we have expectations uh, that uh, and the high hopes that uh, we will be able to resume all our trips. Uh, we have already a lot of students who want to go abroad who were waiting that for two years because for two years we could not go anywhere. And uh, right now they are just eager to travel anywhere. So uh, we, uh, we hope that uh, we will be able to send uh, our first cohort of students abroad uh, during winter semester. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, that uh, there will be no more problems with uh, uh, related to COVID or pandemic. Oh, that's Can I say something? As a oh, matter of do. fact, the, the Natalie, she's teaching, she's a French professor. She's mm -hmm. teaching one of our students who was a double major, Spanish and, uh, and French. He went with me to uh, Spain and now he's in, in Iowa. He has a good job in Iowa. <laughs> yes. He's French and he's Spanish. <laughs> and who would have thought that, that, that a double major in French and Spanish would have brought him to a career in Iowa? But it just goes to show you again, how versatile these degrees are in the subject matter that you're going to learn, uh, or I should say the skills you're going to learn. Um, it's relevant everywhere, everywhere, you know? Um, so this is, yeah, that, that's an important thing to keep in mind as we move forward here. Yeah. Okay, so here is, uh, uh, what might be the good combination of languages? Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, uh, we encourage 100% of our students uh, to take uh, 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 another major as well, because uh, usually uh, people, uh, language is a tool. And uh, uh, in order to be able to successfully use that tool, uh, people need to know something uh, more in depth. So very popular um, uh, majors among uh, our students, uh, so second majors are political science, marketing, communication studies. We have a lot of students uh, who are uh, in the College of Education. Then uh, uh, we have uh, its relatively recent program in international business and uh, a lot of students uh, are coming uh, uh, from that program and they are interested for obvious reasons uh, in the languages. Uh, we have successfully collaborated with uh, anthropology department, uh, uh, with um, uh, digital forensics department, with nursing department, with uh, audiology department. So practically any major existing currently on campus can uh, go well with uh, uh, languages, with foreign languages. And uh, uh, sometimes students find uh, very unexpected connections between uh, uh, two majors. Uh, and uh, we had uh, over the years uh, some very interesting projects uh, that uh, students uh, were pursuing. Uh, and uh, uh, we are always ha happy to, uh, to help students to direct uh, their attention to um, uh, to different fields. So even in classes, I know that uh, Dr. Hidalgo de Jesus is doing that in uh, her classes, that if she sees that a student is interested in education, uh, she, she tries to help uh, that student uh, to combine uh, Spanish and education. If she sees that someone is uh, has interest in uh, computer sciences or digital forensics, uh, she can always uh, adjust the uh, vocabulary requirements or the uh, certain topics uh, that would be appealing for that particular students. So especially at our upper level classes, we are flexible with topics uh, and uh, we always consider 
uh, students are the majors. And Amaryllis and, and, and Mikola, correct me if I'm wrong though, at Bloomsburg, there is also a language requirement in order to graduate, right? So I believe you need, is it, you need to take two classes of a, of a foreign language and culture in order to graduate? That's correct. Uh, so currently uh, Bloomsburg University uh, has uh, the uh, foreign language requirement uh, and uh, students are required typically to take uh, two level of uh, a foreign language. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of students are coming already with um, uh, language, language skills uh, that mm -hmm. uh, they developed uh, during their school career and uh, there is an option for them to take a placement test. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, and the placement test uh, may uh, uh, waive the requirement for foreign language as such, uh, and then students are encouraged to take uh, uh, the foreign language uh, on a higher level. Sure, sure. And that's, so, and so it, for instance, to do a minor in any of the, the foreign languages and cultures programs that we have, that would be six classes, right? Generally, it's around 18 credits. That's correct. Okay. It's six classes, yes. So you've already taken, you've already taken a third of, of the courses you need to complete a minor just by completing your general education requirements, if that makes sense to, to people watching or people watching the recording. Um, you're only four more classes away from completing that minor developing the knowledge and the skills that come along with it, as well as the credential that goes on your resume or your application to grad school or to med school or to law school. I can't say how valuable that is. Yes, and here is, I can add that uh, we are strategically developing classes in the way that uh, uh, we are uh, considering uh, our general educational program. So practically, uh, all our classes, uh, they, uh, they are valued uh, by our students, uh, not only because uh, they are bringing them foreign language skills or knowledge of culture, but also because it works nicely with a general educational program. For example, if students take uh, our culture classes, uh, then those culture classes, they can satisfy uh, uh, requirement in communication or requirement in uh, uh, diversity. Uh, we have also classes that uh, are aiming for social sciences and so on. So by taking our classes, uh, students uh, simultaneously, they learn something about uh, foreign cultures, about global cultures, and they satisfy uh, the general educational requirements uh, that uh, are counted uh, towards the university career and uh, towards the other major. Yep. We also have uh, classes in, in uh, German, Spanish, and French. Uh, for example, like commercial Spanish, mm -hmm. we, we had that one in German, uh, Spanish, and French. And then in Spanish, we have Spanish for the medical profession, mm -hmm. Spanish for social services. And those are courses that typically students who are in the social sciences or mm -hmm. how to win another minor that accept this, mm -hmm. uh, this class, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they take, take that and they do like, they, they're able to do, two minors at the same time because they right. can use some of our classes. And uh, the classes usually are, are popular. No? Mm -hmm. And we also we connect our classes with, with, uh, um, with the outside world. Let's put it yes. like that. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's really, um, so honestly, I did not know that. And I'm glad you, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Amarillo. So like, for instance, if you're going into social work, you're going to be able to take not just like a basic Spanish vocabulary course, right? Where and that might be part of the curriculum, but you're going to teach, you know, you're going to take a class that's specifically yeah. built around the language and the culture you would need to be able to deliver a social service to someone in your chosen career, right? It's, it's, it's specific to what you want to do. It's tailored to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's super interesting. And that, that's, that's a wonderful idea. Great, thanks. 
So then uh, the next aspect that we have to consider is what makes a good student. So who are, who are our students? Uh, what is uh, the demograph demographics in our department? So uh, in general, uh, uh, students are interested in a foreign language or in general in uh, linguistics. Uh, we have uh, a, a lot of students who come uh, to our classes uh, with intention just to learn how language might work and then stay uh, in our department. Then uh, also uh, we have a lot of students who are interested in traveling. So obviously that is uh, almost a prerequisite because uh, if uh, uh, you want to use the language, uh, it's better to travel somewhere. Uh, then uh, uh, we have uh, students who are interested in world and cultural affairs. Uh, so uh, uh, students who have those particular interests, uh, they uh, tend to succeed in our classes and uh, uh, we have a very diverse, very nice uh, group of uh, students uh, currently in our department. Uh, so um, absolutely someone who comes to our department is always surprised about the variety of interests that uh, our faculty are pursuing and uh, mm -hmm. that our students uh, are following. Sure. So then uh, uh, it's, it's what kind of careers uh, can uh, uh, students uh, who study foreign languages do? Um, there are multiple careers, uh, foreign language skills, as uh, I was saying in the very beginning, that uh, they are required practically everywhere. Uh, a lot of students uh, find uh, jobs uh, as language specialist uh, uh, and uh, policy analyst uh, in the area of uh, hospitality, in law, uh, in human resources, in uh, business management, law enforcement, uh, uh, working with immigrants uh, or with uh, uh, immigrant populations uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a lot of uh, students, uh, a lot of our students currently work for government. Uh, they, uh, uh, they find jobs uh, in education uh, mm -hmm. and uh, in uh, uh, not-for-profit sector. Right. So uh, it's depending on uh, what language uh, students study, they aim for different career paths. Mm -hmm. And uh, they definitely find their place in in this world. And, and to me, like it's such there are certain fields where it's a really natural marriage, right? And like among the easiest ones, like education is mm -hmm. an easy one, right? Being able to speak a second language as it, as a teacher, regardless of the subject matter, regardless of where you teach, the age level, super helpful. Business, the business is the one that sticks out the most for me. Um, we all hear about how we live in a globalized economy, right? It was like, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that every, basically every business in this country, either we import products from overseas or we have clients and customers overseas, or, you know, like we are um, middlemen in, you know, between a, a process and it's being shipped out of our country. Like, well, you're going to be interacting with people from outside of the United States, right? So being able to speak another language, being able to understand a culture that's different from your own, like I can't say how, how powerful that is. Um, when we did our international business um, in our supply chain management departmental deep dives, this was a subject that was really consistently brought up as like being able to speak another language is so important, uh, not only to you as an individual, but to your employer, and to your clients, your customers, other companies you work with. Um, and sometimes that's a minimum expectation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, also due to the fact that we have uh, critical languages uh, in our department, such as uh, Arabic, Chinese, uh, Russian, those mm -hmm. languages are extremely important for military and uh, for our government. Yep. So in fact, uh, uh, there are, uh, the financial incentives for people who speak uh, critical languages. Uh, and uh, mm, that's why a lot of our students who are looking in for uh, careers uh, within CIA uh, or FBI, yeah, mm -hmm. they are uh, selecting those languages because uh, that, that can help them uh, in um, uh, their uh, career, uh, like 
career perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So, and uh, uh, here a couple of words about our alumni, where they work, uh, what they achieve. So we have uh, alumni uh, in many, many different uh, fields. Uh, and uh, uh, here I put just the uh, most recent uh, alumni uh, who uh, succeeded. One of them works as digital forensics analyst. So currently he is in uh, California and uh, he's very successful. Uh, in uh, uh, what he does because he works uh, for international company and uh, he uses his language skills uh, and uh, uh, digital forensic skills. Uh, another one works uh, as a logistics manager for international company, uh, helping uh, to move uh, goods uh, between different countries. Uh, we have a couple of students uh, who uh, decided after graduation from Bloomsburg University to go into law school uh, and uh, currently they uh, study law. Uh, some of them even graduated and they are currently working as lawyers. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, one of the students who graduated, uh, I believe two years ago, and uh, he is uh, currently uh, a PhD student uh, in uh, New Me Mexico, and uh, he studies astrophysics, uh, and uh, he works, uh, or, or he has a project uh, for NASA, uh, with NASA. Uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, federal agents uh, who are working with uh, different uh, federal agencies, uh, uh, helping um, to uh, protect the uh, United States. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few students who graduated from medical schools uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they find it very useful to be able to speak to some of their patients in, uh, uh, in different languages. A lot of the students in the, in the health uh, field no? are taking languages. Uh, Physician assistant, doctor. We have several. We have several ones who, uh, who did a double major, and they are in the medical field, mm -hmm. and nurses, no, uh, also. And um, we have a lot of teachers. That's something else that that, that, uh, that we have. But one that is calling my attention is <laughs> one who graduated from Spanish, and now. She established, actually, it, it is the first uh, Spanish uh, program for agriculture oh, wow. for farmers. So wow. She, yeah, she's training farmers in Spanish. <laughs> and she's doing very good. You know, these are things that you don't think about it. Yeah. But they yep. are there. And we have a student who had been working with refugees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's something else because uh, the U.S. It is it's a country that we see people from different parts of the, of the world, and languages are are very important there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and uh, just do, so, sorry, it's like the, yeah, the students sorry. usually find connections, no, with mm -hmm. the language that they study and with what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just yesterday, I was contacted by one of my former students, and uh, he was uh, excited to inform me that uh, he started to work as a pilot on uh, uh, commercial uh, airlines, uh, and uh, he was happy to report uh, that uh, he can greet uh, passengers right now in several languages. <laughs> and, it's, and again, I mean, the, the slide, and then also... Amarillis and Mikola, the, the, you know, the, the additions to um, some of the other students that you had mentioned, it shows you the, again, just like the, the wide array of where, you know, graduates are going with this skill set. Um, I'm sure that's not a coincidence that a lot of these students are highly successful when they leave here, because again, this is a skill set that, um, is super super helpful. I know I sound like a broken you know broken record here, but it is. I really will tell you this. This is very interesting what you're saying. We have, because I keep track of them in Facebook. No? Uh, we have one who has been doing uh, 
a project with, uh, I guess it's Harvard University mm -hmm. and her major, she did business, no? And now she's doing a project with Harvard and her major was German. Mm -hmm. um, so they surprise you with the things that they are doing. Uh, how they, they were able to integrate the language that they learned, you know? Sure with what they are currently doing. And mm -hmm. they, a, lot, a lot of things, I'm telling right. you this, uh, amaze me to see <laughs> how are they using their language skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, I agree. Yeah, and this one, it's uh, the job outlook. So uh, just uh, before our today's conversation, I was looking through some of the most recent data and uh, uh, the information that I found that uh, it's projection for growth uh, uh, from uh, for the next, uh, what is it, uh, eight years? Uh, uh, so from 2020 to 2030. And uh, there is expectation that uh, there will be more demand uh, for specialists uh, who can speak foreign languages in the areas of uh, uh, post-secondary education, uh, then uh, uh, so the demand will grow by uh, approximately uh, 24%. Uh, then uh, the same number of uh, uh, growth uh, or the same level of growth will be experienced in the fields of uh, interpretation and uh, translation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is significant growth uh, uh, in uh, legal area that is expected, so by almost 10%. Uh, um, then uh, uh, obviously there is, uh, and uh, Dr. Amarili Sidakuda has us mentioned about that. And uh, we talked a little bit about this, that uh, there is huge need for secondary teachers uh, who uh, speak foreign languages. Um, uh, then uh, uh, also there will be a demand uh, for, more demand for uh, people who speak uh, foreign languages in, uh, uh, business uh, uh, and here, uh, so as you can see, it's uh, by uh, seven percent. It is expected that mm -hmm. um, we will need to have uh, more people with um, good uh, foreign language skills. Right, and this again, it goes to show that not only do you become a better global citizen from learning another language and, and, and culture, but it makes you more employable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This is gonna help, like there are tangible benefits to this. This is not just, I'm getting smarter, right? It's not just a mental exercise. This is, no, 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 this is gonna help me get a job. This is gonna help me get paid more. Because mm -hmm. uh, your college degree, it's an investment, right? And you need to look at it like that. Um, this is one of the things that helps make your investment that much more worthwhile. Yeah. And you know, and, and we also, for example, this is also interesting with uh, our students because sometimes then they go and do masters and PhD in, in the target language. And um, we have actually we have one who is right now uh, she just was promoted an associate professor mm -hmm. at Kansas State University. Uh, she's teaching their Spanish, but we have other students who have gone. To good university to study Russian, no, or to study German, French, for example, at the University of Pittsburgh, we had one uh, who went to study French, and and they are college professors, uh, so they find their path, mm -hmm. they do, uh, and connecting what you like with a resource. Because this is a good resource, a language, no? Mm -hmm. And improving your skills in a foreign language is going to help you a lot. And this is something that sometimes the students don't realize. Yep. But uh, it helps them a lot. And mm -hmm. I can tell you cases and cases of <laughs> people who are <laughs> like, like general, uh, I guess, uh, attorneys in the Philadelphia area or who having great positions with the Allentown uh, police very high, you know, because of their skills. Right. And sometimes they learn two languages, not only one language, because it happens to them. They like languages. So they study more than one too. 
There's no limit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and absolutely, you are right, Thomas, that uh, uh, there is a direct correlation between uh, language skills and uh, the um, salary levels. Uh, so mm -hmm. it pays uh, to study foreign mm -hmm. language. Yeah. So the return on investment that uh, our students see, it's uh, depending on the field, uh, but uh, it can be anything from uh, 10 to, to 50%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Again, it goes to you because you will be in, in demand. It's in yes, demand. yes. Yep. Agreed. And uh, here is information about us. Uh, so our emails uh, are provided here. So if uh, anyone has any questions, it's uh, either me uh, or Dr. Hidalgo de Jesus uh, will, be provide, will be able to provide you with any information about our department. Great, I'm thank you. I'm good at answering email. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I just had a, a couple of follow up questions. Um, the, the, the one question I always think that is uh, very light and helps give some insight into what students will do in the courses um, or in the, in the degree program is asking you what your favorite class to teach is and why. So now I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but like you can only teach one class for the rest of your career. I'm realist for the next 30 years. There's only one class you can teach. What's that one class? I like, I like to teach culture classes. The culture <laughs> classes. And no, no, why and I, is that? I do because I, I have a, a background in, in history. Okay. Also in nursing too. <laughs> I used to, to teach them the, the Spanish America. Health services here, no? Sure. And, and I, I, I like that one. And I like the Spanish for the professional ones. But uh, I, I like to, to put the students to think about what is going on in the world. And, and I'm constantly reading. And I am, well, I am an avid reader mm -hmm. and also a traveler. <laughs> I'm realist. You are busy. Holy cow. I travel a lot. And when I'm mm -hmm. teaching cultures, I bring my traveling experience to the classroom right because it's i'm talking it's for example you not necessarily uh spanish speaking culture mm -hmm. no? but is i'm talking about um the middle eastern cultures you know i mm -hmm. can say you know what i have been in turkey and this is the way that uh, uh what i observe no? right that they learn i, I have been in france no? This is the way that French people are. Right. There are so many myths and right. stereotypes about them that they are not true. Mm -hmm. And things like that. Uh, I do really like cultures. I do. <laughs> uh, because also, I am a learner. Because right. I like to, to, to learn. And also, I connect that also with women's studies because that sure. is together with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Merging all your ideas. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. It's a great story. Thank you, Ambrose. Uh, Mikola. So since culture was taken already, <laughs> so I cannot use the same. Uh, I really enjoy teaching elementary level of uh, uh, language. And uh, it is due to the fact, even though it's it looks relatively easy, but I l just love to observe uh, how students are making first steps in their language and how suddenly within uh, a month or two, things start uh, clicking for them. Mm -hmm. Because suddenly they see a bigger picture and uh, there is excitement in their eyes uh, in when they start to build simple sentences. And mm -hmm. uh, when even they try to use those sentences with native speakers. Right. And uh, they are absolutely astonished uh, that someone understands them, what they are saying. So it builds uh, confidence in them. And uh, towards uh, the end of uh, uh, one on one level, uh, you you can see that uh, they are very confident uh, in what they are saying, uh, that uh, they are making progress and they feel that progress. They feel how they change within one semester. Mm 
Right. So in other levels, you can see that change uh, to a lesser extent because they come already with some knowledge of the language. Gotcha. But in the first level, very first level, when they come with zero knowledge right. and they leave the course being able to say something about themselves or their day, it, it is absolutely wonderful feeling right. to, to see that. No, I agree with you too. I, I do agree. I, I like to teach 101. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I'm one of those. I laugh a lot in those classes. But I also teach them culture there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have they, to do that. They learn some culture there. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, so that's they're, great. They, they, they're very, uh, they are like, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. I said, well, no, right. you know. But, um, but it's true, you know, uh, to see them. And I guess it's to, to be being able, when you're a language professor, you need to reach the student. You need to bond with the student. Right. And that's uh, at least, I, am, I know that Mikola is that type of person, and I'm that mm -hmm. type of person. Uh, and you know yes. what is the best reward? That when they are living at them, the last day of classes, mm -hmm. they come to you and they hug you and they say, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you because I learned this and that. And that's very important. And they keep in touch. We are right. very popular with our, our alumni. They come yeah. and us. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure you, you, you probably have had some, you know, students who have stopped by your office today oh, or we have a lot of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, this is finals week at Bloomsburg, which is always... Um, for those of us on staff, a very bittersweet moment because, you know, you get to see the students. So in admissions, we get to see our tour guides and the students that we recruited come through and graduate. It's like, oh, geez, I remember talking to this student at a college fair and now they're crossing the stage at graduation. And for faculty, it's like, oh, I had the student in their 101 class and in the culture 101 class right now, they're getting ready to graduate. So, uh, but the downside is you're not going to see them as often as you used to, right? So, um, so again, bittersweet in every sense of the word, but uh, it is nice that, um, you know, they, they, they will swing back and, and see you, Amarillis and, and, and Mikola, and stay in contact because you clearly made an impact. They um, letters, letters. And yeah. I, I really know a lot about them. Yeah, I, I do. And Mikola too. They, they come here. Sometimes we share students because I was teaching the languages and culture yeah. class. So they come to see Mikola. But actually, they sometimes reach Mikola through me. <laughs> Who's keeping track, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are helping each other. It's yes, right. It's normal. But, but, but it is nice to see them when they come when they come back. Excellent. And so fi a final question for the night here. Um, I know we, we talked a lot about how um, immersing yourself in the culture is an important part of this. Um, oftentimes, um, students identify an interest in studying a foreign language and culture in college um, because they like to travel. And you both mentioned that you are very, very well traveled. Mm -hmm. yes. What's your fit? What, what What was your favorite trip? Like your favorite place to go to? What's again? You've got one more trip. You're going to make this every year. You only get to pick one. What's the trip? Uh, I'm Morales. <laughs> well, I love to go to Spain a lot. <laughs> okay. 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 I go to Spain twice, twice or three times a year, but. Uh, is I have to choose, uh, it, I don't know. I really, I don't know. There are countries where I would like to go, but uh, but I said I, I like to go to Spain and Portugal for me. Those are Spain and Portugal. Right. And, and, and when it comes to Latin America, right? Uh, I will say I used to go a lot to Venezuela. Okay. Uh, but right now, I can't. No. Yeah. But. Uh, but one day I would be able to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope. Oh, that's okay. great. You're right. Um, Nicola, what are you? Um, yeah, so can I name a region instead of country? Sure, sure. Well, yes, we, we, okay. we will amend the question to include a region, sure. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be Europe. Okay. So I, I love traveling in Europe. I love different countries in Europe. I uh, traveled and lived in multiple countries within uh, European continent. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's somewhat hard to pick just one single country. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I love uh, uh, Germany. I love uh, Poland. Uh, I absolutely adore France. Uh, I love uh, 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 country uh, Scandinavian countries mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, for me 
uh, Europe, it's uh, definitely the destination uh, where I would like uh, to, to go every year, every summer, mm -hmm. and uh, to spend there a lot of time. I also enjoy traveling to other regions, uh, but uh, uh, just because my uh, research interests are more uh, Europe, with European focus, uh, and uh, because of languages that I speak, they are also mostly European languages. So it's almost naturally that uh, I'm interested in uh, the European continent. I gotta say something. Mm -hmm. I love my Caribbean. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I have been everywhere in the Caribbean. <laughs> and, yes. And, and I gotta mention the Caribbean because I'm from there, you know? <laughs> right. I'm real. I'm getting the sense that you, that you appreciate warm weather as well. Most of your locations are all warm weather spots. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yet you and yet you find yourself teaching at a university in Pennsylvania. Who who would have oh, thought? <laughs> it's like winter time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, great. Well, thank you everybody for for joining us tonight, um, or, or everyone who is uh, watching the recording. I appreciate you you tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact contact any of us. We, um, you know, we work for you, um, and we're happy to do so. And we uh, certainly look forward to hearing from everybody in the future. Okay. Have, have a good you night. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs>